بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام الأتمان الأكملان على خير خلقه أجمعين وبعد We commence by praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى sending blessings and salutations upon the masterpiece Muhammad ibn Abdullah al-Hashimi al-Qurashi May Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless him and all his household and may Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless all his companions and may he bless every single one of us and our offspring to come up to the last day. Ameen. My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, it is indeed an honor to be seated in one of the houses of the Almighty, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the most blessed place on earth. And it is indeed an honor to be speaking on the subject which is connected to the reason why we attend these houses, or one of the reasons. And at the same time, in this beautiful city of Doha, it is very good to see the smiles on the faces of the brothers who are here, mashallah. It is a smile that breeds a smile. So I noticed as soon as I broke into a smile, many of the brothers in front of me broke into a smile as well. I mean, we are very fortunate to be Muslimin. We take it for granted sometimes. I have traveled many countries on the globe and I have seen that sometimes those who were not born Muslim happen to be stronger than those who were born Muslim. And I have noticed that many people who have seen the darkness, the day they come to the light, they take it more seriously than those who were born in the light. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So Islam is not franchised to me or to you. It is not patented or copyrighted to anybody, any nationality, any color, any race. Islam is a religion that is definitely for the East and the West as much as it is for the North and the South. Whoever would like to take from it will get much goodness. We have in this beautiful religion certain teachings that are so powerful and so good. All the teachings are good, but some of them stand out. If you take a look at the issue of prayer, the, firstly, to start with, the word prayer is an English word that is not the correct translation of the term salah. Because some people say dua and they still use the word prayer. So salah is a type of a prayer which a Muslim will understand. If you look at the Arabic language, they say al-ma'na al-lughawi wal ma'na shari'i or al-ma'na al-istilahi. They have a linguistic meaning of the term salah, which is ad-du'a, which means to call out, to beseech, or perhaps to supplicate. And then you have the deeper meaning of salah, a set of actions and deeds, or sayings, statements and deeds, commencing in a specific way with the takbir, and ending in a specific way with the taslim or with the salam. And what happens between that is known as salah. And it happens a few times a day. If you look at this gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us, and you look at it as a gift, then only you will realize its value. Sadly, many people look at salah as a burden. And sometimes some people look at salah as though it is something that we just need to, we need to get it done with. That's it. So people will come for salah, but as a routine, only routine, not with the heart plugged in to say, when I say Allahu Akbar, I am actually saying Allah is the greatest. Amazing. Allah is the greatest. Who is Allah? My maker is the greatest. The one whom I depend upon is the greatest. The one who owns every aspect of my entire existence is the greatest. 
Can there be a more beautiful way than commencing your plug-in with your maker than that? The answer is no. It's the best. Because it was decreed by him. So when we see the non-Muslims, when they don't know what salah is all about, they ask us, what are you murmuring? What are you uttering? And many of us don't know ourselves what it means. Those who know the Arabic language are fortunate. And those who don't, Sometimes they might just think it means God is great. God is the greatest. Fair enough. But do you think of the deeper meaning of it when you actually raise your hands in that initial takbir of salah or throughout the salah and you say Allahu Akbar? The one who is in absolute control of every aspect of my existence is the greatest. That statement, nobody can deny its correctness. It is the most correct statement you can utter. Because if I were to speak to a person who belongs to a different faith altogether, and to tell him that whoever is in control of your entire existence, would you say that they are the greatest? And the person would have to say, yes, he is. Whoever he is, he is. So well, when I pray five times a day, I pray to my maker. I do not pray to a stick or a stone or a human being or a grave or a tree. No, I pray to whomsoever made me. A few days ago, and this is just coincidentally, I had a Christian man come to my house on a different issue altogether. And he did not know much about Islam, only you know, what they hear on the media that Islam is a very bad religion that preaches a lot of evil and violence. Whereas that is wrong, that is incorrect. Islam preaches and promotes peace. In fact, peace is engraved in the name Islam. So I asked him a question because it's our duty. Believe me, any of us who interact with those who are non-Muslim, it is our duty to beautifully, when you get the opportunity, at least explain to them what is it that we believe? It's our duty. We cannot let them go by without having told them. We know that the Quran says, <laughs> You do not have the capacity to guide whomsoever you wish. You can show them the path, but you do not have the ownership of guidance. We guide whomsoever we wish, Allah tells Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What this means is, guidance is divided into some categories. One category of guidance is الدلالah irshad To show someone the path. I can show someone the path from here to the city. Whether they follow that path or not, it's not my business. They might follow it, they might not follow it. That is now a tawfiq. Whether Allah gives them the acceptance to walk on that path is a different issue. Many people know the truth, but they don't walk on the path. And there are people who as soon as they know the truth, they walk on it. So that is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this man came and I told him, do you know as Muslims we pray to the one who made us. So he tells me, I thought you pray to an idol. I said, what? We are the furthest away from idols. So he continues to explain to me what he was taught in his church. And that was very wrong. He was taught that, look, Allah, na'udhu billah, may Allah safeguard all of us and our offspring. He was taught that Allah is one idol that remained on the Kaaba the day Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam destroyed all the idols. He left one of them and he called them Allah. A'udhu billah. And this news is going around the globe amongst the non-Muslims. They are spreading this to say it's actually one idol. This is why Muslims pray to the black box in Mecca. And they see us making sajda in that direction. So that is an evidence for them to say, you see, we told you, they pray to the black box. Whereas, wallahi, it's our duty to tell them the black box is nothing but to create uniformity. We respect it as the Kaaba because the Quran says it is the first house to be built for Allah in Mecca. Allah has praised the Kaaba 
and its vicinity in the verse in the Quran. And for this reason, we say, we are facing it only for uniformity. We are not worshipping the Kaaba. Anyone who thinks for one moment that we worship the Kaaba, they cannot call themselves submitters to Allah. They cannot call themselves Muslim. Because a Muslim is he, not the one who submits to a Kaaba, but the one who submits to the, the Rabb of the Kaaba. The one who submits to the Lord of the worlds. We say, when we fulfill Salah, we are not putting our head down on the ground for the sake of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, no. But for the sake of the Rabb of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is my Rabb and yours. And this is why when I explain to this man, saying to him, that do you know, we put our head on the ground five times a day for our maker, whoever gave me this life, so my head is on the ground for him. Whoever gave me my sustenance, today when you talk about business and dealing, everyone wants to listen. Because we know the real and the dollar is very very important according to us. Someone says, brother there's a deal, 20,000 real in one month, you get it just like that, very easy, come come I show you investment. We are very happy, yes talk to me. The, the lecture hall will be full because everyone wants you know, to make more and more money. So people do not understand, the one who owns that... He is the one we put our head on the ground for. How can we want blessing in our wealth when the owner of blessing is disregarded five times a day? We don't even read salah. Can I get happiness whilst I am going against the owner of happiness? I cannot. Can I get baraka or blessing in my sustenance, in my wealth, in my money, whilst I am going against the owner of blessings? If you are the boss... And I'm sure you will understand my example. If you are a big manager at your company, someone wants leave and they need to go through you in order to get the leave. And then you find that they have, or whilst they were walking, you looked at them and they told you, look, please, can you do this for me and that for me? And you did not do it. And you didn't do it at all. In fact, you went against them. The day you came for leave, what, what is the chance of you getting your leave? When you know that you haven't gone in, you haven't done anything to even prove that you are a dedicated worker and now you want leave. He will tell you, look, you don't really deserve the leave now. You need to go and work a bit harder and then come back whenever you have proven yourself. What happens with us? We want goodness. We want happiness. We want contentment. We want sustenance. We want our children to be good. We want our lives to be in order. We want goodness in our marriages and goodness in all aspects of our life. But are we prepared to fulfill the instruction of the owner of all that? One of his instructions is, Hayya al-falah. Come to success. When we hear that, do we come? It's a question. Alhamdulillah, I am speaking this evening in a masjid, in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, those who are seated here may say, yes, we do. Well, for us, we need to always go one step higher. Don't be satisfied with your condition of spirituality. Try your best to become higher and higher. Now, if you have come to the masjid, concentrate better. How do you concentrate better? I think today it would be important for us to speak on the mobile phone for one minute to say how can we allow ourselves to come in the house of Allah? We've made the effort, we made wudu, we managed to drive all the way here or to walk all the way here. We braved the heat or the weather conditions. As we walk in it is nice and cool and then we are sitting with our mobile phones and busy plugging in with everyone else on the globe. And whilst everyone is in salah, the Imam is about to say, Samia Allahu liman hamidah. And you hear this man's phone ring, and the other man's phone ring, and one of the sister's phones rings. And if the phone rings, it's one thing, but the tone itself is a disaster. It is really desecration of the masjid. Because those who are immoral, those who have engaged in the worst immorality in the world, and they have sung songs that are full of nudity, the same song, we bring it as a ringtone into the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without shame. 
If that's the case, where is our salah? Where is our salah? Let us inshallah achieve improvement on that. I make an effort by the will of Allah and I hope and I pray that I can benefit from what I have just said. May Allah make me conscious of my telephone. When I walk in, I switch it off. I saw a sign as we were reading salah to say the phone must be switched off. Those should not just be signs implemented. Today when you see a camera, and I saw so many in Doha, every traffic light there is a camera. I want to say a point, you can take it how you want. I am a foreigner here, but I learned something. Do you know how people fear the camera? No matter what, they will break so hard that the man behind them might hit them. They don't mind, but that 6,000 I must not get the fine. Am I right? It's true, because we are worried. We have a fine. We are, we are going to be penalized. Something is going to go from our pocket. If we cross and there is a camera flash. I want to say something you can take home. If we fear Allah, half of what we fear a camera, we would solve our problem. That's what I have said. You can take it how you want. You can disagree or agree. But I have seen people who will stop at the instruction of a camera. But they will not stop at the limit of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what happens to us. If there is a policeman and we are not supposed to be talking on our mobile phone, we make sure the hands-free is working. You tell me, is it more important to make sure your mobile is in the right place in your car or in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Which has greater sanctity? Which has more importance? How can we turn it upside down? Allahu Akbar. And then we want happiness, we want goodness. And I say, brother, I read five salah. Alhamdulillah, I read five salah a day. I'm happy. MashaAllah. Improve your salah. Thank Allah He has given you the ability to read five salah a day. But improve it. Take your time about it. Come a little bit earlier. When we are in a rush, our concentration goes. So now I want to ask a question. Who needs this salah? Does Allah need it from us? Or do we need it? Wallahi, we need it. And this is why the Quran is full of verses which show that Allah is independent. We are dependent. Ya nasu antumul fuqara'u ila Allah. Wallahu Oh people, you are the ones who are totally dependent on Allah. You are the ones who are totally, al ilallah, absolute dependence on Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. He is the owner. He owns us completely. So Allah is saying, O oh people, you are absolutely dependent on Allah and Allah is totally independent from you. He does not need anything from you. Your ibadah does not help Allah, it helps you. Your salah does not help Allah, it helps you. So when you walk in the masjid, don't just think I am paying lip service to this act of worship so that Allah will be off my back. A'udhu billah. No. I am coming as an honor and a privilege. Allah put it in my heart and gave me the strength and the ability and the love of the masjid to come to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here I am. When I say Allahu Akbar, I don't want to waste it. I don't want to waste it. Some example came to my head right now. If someone were to invite you to the best eating place that you think is for food and told you this is on the house, which means eat for free. Everything here is free. What will you do? When it's free and it's the best, you make sure you don't miss the opportunity. Because even if you're not so hungry, you see that nice food that you like, you will still take a little bit. And you need this and you might want to take some home. Say, this is free. When am I going to get an opportunity like this? Wallahi, when we enter the masjid, we should treat the masjid in a much higher way than that. When we come into the house of Allah, this is an opportunity. Seize it. Read the beautiful salah. Read some extra salah. Come with your time. Even if you feel I have fulfilled my salah, there is space for sunnah and nafil. Nafila. Yes, the farad is what is compulsory. But above that, why don't we spend some time, at least sometimes, read a little bit more. 
Is it wrong? If it is within the sunnah and within what is taught by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa as voluntary prayer, we cannot say it's wrong. And when we are fulfilling it, take your time. Sometimes you find people, they read salah as though they are competing with the chickens. The chickens pecking the grain from the floor. The man is down before you can say subhana, he's already up. And the next thing he's gone. And the imam says, Sami Allahu liman hamida. And he's still standing. And some people are halfway down already. Halfway down. They want to go. Get done with. It. How can we do this? We are insulting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are insulting ourselves. Allah says, I don't need this. There are other people who will be praying salah better than me and you. Let's compete with one another when it comes to salah. Which means we need to think to ourselves, let me read the best prayer possible. As what was taught by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I will take my time and I will try to concentrate. When we have too much on our heads, we lose concentration. So when we come to the masjid, try not to have much on your head. Lay whatever you have to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Come to the house of Allah and wallahi you will achieve success. You see the words of Adhan, we know them, we all know them off by heart. But do we think about them? I said, Hayya ala al-falah moments ago for a reason. Because many people don't understand it is the call to success. I want to succeed and you want to succeed. We all want to succeed. But the problem we are facing is we think success is only when your workplace is in order, your family is in order, and your money is in order, and your health is in order, and everything looks smart and beautiful and lovely, then you are successful. That is what we think. But wallahi, success is beyond that. فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازِ The one who is saved from the fire of Jahannam, the fire of hell, and is granted entry into paradise, shall be the one who has succeeded. So that is success. Ultimate success is the success in the life after death. How many people have been so wealthy, but they've still died? How many have been much more powerful than us? They've still died. So one of the biggest means of success is to surrender to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the means of surrendering or one of the points that we should be surrendering Regarding is the salah, salah five times a day. Remember, never compromise it. A Muslim does not read salah. A Muslim does not miss salah. Al ahdu ladi baynana wa baynahumus salah. A narration says the differing point, the defining point between us and those who disbelieve. What is it? It is salah. Another narration says man taraka salata muta'amidan faqad kafar. A'udhu billah. Allahu akbar. Allah safeguard us. Whoever leaves and forsakes salah purposely, intentionally, intentionally, they cannot call themselves those within the fold of Islam. Tough words that are used here. Tough words. Person, how can we leave salah intentionally? Drop everything. Please your maker. Drop it. Please your maker. Make sure that your salah is in order. That is what will grant you the ultimate success. The dunya is full of trials. If you have health today, tomorrow it has to go. If you have wealth today, tomorrow it has to go. If you have free time today, one day you will be occupied. If you have life today, tomorrow it will go. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us steadfastness. My beloved brothers and sisters, I am here from a far off land. And wallahi, my intention, the aim and objective is solely one. For the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we want to remind one another of our duties. Whatever I have said today, you know it. And I know it. We are just repeating it. I cannot come with something new to you. Because Islam is already there. The rules and regulations are there. But I can give you a word of encouragement that will serve as an encouragement for myself to start with. So it's important for us to give greater importance to salah. And when we come for salah, we should be dressed appropriately with good clothing. As the Quran says, 
يا بني آدم خذوا زينتكم عند كل مسجد O children of Adam ensure that you have adorned yourself correctly take your adornment when you get to the places of worship where you are going to put your head down for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what this means is sometimes people might come to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dressed in their night clothing which they only wear when they wake up from their sleep the salah might be done your private area or part is covered so I cannot tell you your salah is not valid it is valid because you have covered but you want to plug in greater to achieve more of the spiritual benefit you need to take pride I'm going to plug in with Allah if I had a meeting with someone in the dunya I would probably wear some good clothing at least and smell good and at least give importance to the meeting I want to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at least I need to wear clothing that is decent so if we look forward to salah we will be able to achieve a greater benefit than to just fulfill salah and this is why I want to end by saying there is a very big difference between reading salah because you have to read it and reading salah because you want to read it there is a difference between the two many people read it because they have to read it but let us be from amongst those who read it because we want to read it Allahu Akbar I want to do it not I have to I have to is a stage but move above that we would like to read salah because we want to that is when we will be able to plug in with Allah I see there are some children here as well Wallahi your success and mine lies in fulfilling salah don't be lazy you want happiness in the dunya and the akhirah in this world and the next it lies primarily we know in the obedience of Allah and one of the prime points beautiful point of salah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who understand that salah is actually a gift may he make us from those who can fulfill it correctly and may he make us from those who progress every day and who do not go back on their achievements and may he make us from those who can encourage our family members as well to fulfill salah and may he make us from those who can be a beacon of light and may he make that inshallah a means of our entry into paradise through his mercy may allah bless us all wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina muhammad subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanak allahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa natubu